Welcome to the On The Rise Academy. In this tutorial, what we're gonna do is go through iTunes and specifically the setup that you're gonna need if you're gonna use this to DJ with and organize your playlists. I appreciate that some people out there that don't like iTunes and there's a lot of Apple haters, but in our experience, certainly iTunes is one of the best programs out there to kind of centralize all of your playlists. And if you're gonna be using Serato and then move on to Tractor, all of your playlists and all your organization is in one place. But anyway, if you're gonna set up in iTunes, all you need to do is quite simply go to the preferences and there's a lot of stuff that you don't need to worry about so we're just going to cover the bits and pieces that you do need to do in general the first thing is when a cd is inserted import settings now not only does this kind of check what kind of bit rate and quality the files are when you rip a cd but also if you convert a wav or ar for basically an uncompressed file in itunes to an mp3 these are the import settings that it will use so click on import settings and the first thing you'll do is uh, you've got a list of different options that you've got there. Now, MP3 is probably going to be one of the most popular ones, but there's plenty of other ones out there as well. Now, if you do select MP3, this is the really important part. What it will do is it will give you a list of good quality, high quality, higher quality. These are all rubbish. Basically, you need to go to custom and that will open up a new tab. You need to check stereo bit rate to 320. Now, a lot of these settings that iTunes, what they're trying to do is they're trying to basically minimize the file size by adding filters, smart coding adjustments, and you want to switch all of that off. You want the most natural sounding from when the CD comes into your computer or whether you're ripping a WAV, whatever it may be, you want it in its most native, natural state. So we're going to set 320. We don't, we want to make sure variable bit rate encoding is unchecked because what we want is a constant bit rate of 320 all the way through from start to finish. What the variable bit rate will do is if you select it, if there's a dip in the audio, say there's like a vocal, or an intro if there's not as much information it'll encode at a lower rate again it's trying to make that file size smaller sample rate 44.1 channels stereo stereo mode normal smart encoding adjustments again what that is doing is iTunes is going to start selecting certain bits and pieces to remove or change in the audio so it can get that file size smaller you don't want it to do that filter frequencies below 10 kilohertz again you know check that if you don't want any sub bass in there but most of you are going to be using this for for dance music of various sorts so you want those sub bass frequencies in there so make sure that is unchecked click ok click ok and then playback sharing store restrictions and devices there's nothing in there that we need to focus on for this particular tutorial advanced so there's three tech boxes that you want to uh, keep an eye on here. These two are really kind of sort of preferences, but I would highly recommend doing them. Keep iTunes media folder organized. What that does is that when you put your files in there and you rename any of the metadata, it'll automatically organize it in the background in files. We used to be like a complete nut for like trying to keep all the files organized into folders, but actually iTunes is a great interface to be able to automatically do that. So you're saving a lot of time not faffing around changing all of the uh, folder names and file names. Copy files to iTunes media folder when adding to library. Again, this is a great one to check if you buy your music from Beatport. When you download it, all you need to simply do is just drag it from the Finder straight into iTunes and it will automatically make a copy so you can just delete it. If your mate is a producer and he's giving you a couple of tracks, all you need to do is put the USB in, drag them straight into iTunes and it will make a copy of them so you don't need to put them onto your hard drive. Now this last one, this is the most important one. Share iTunes library XML with other applications. If this is not checked, what will happen is when you open up Serato, Tractor, Recordbox, any of these programs, it will not see your iTunes library and it will not see any of your playlists. So you wanna make sure that is on so that you can see this you can see the hierarchy that I've got here of various different genres. All of those will be replicated when I open up uh, Tractor, Serato, any of those. That's it for this tutorial. Nice and brief, but straight to the point. Don't forget to head over to our website, ontheriseacademy.com, for more tutorials, videos, blog, and of course, check out our one-on-one -on -one courses. We've got loads of bespoke courses, which we really do tailor to exactly what you need so you get just what you need out of it. We've got group courses, production courses, and various other bits and pieces.